ओके वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग माय डियर स्टूडेंट्स टुडे वी कैन डिस्कस द डेटा ट्रांसमिशन सो इन द सेकंड चैप्टर वी डिस्कस्ड वेरियस डिजिटल एनकोडिंग डिजिटल ट्रांसमिशन टेक्निक्स नेमली एएसके एफएसके एंड पीएसके सो इन दिस करस्पोंडिंग चैप्टर वी कैन सी हाउ द डेटा हाउ द करस्पोंडिंग मॉड्यूलेटेड सिग्नल विल बी रिसीव्ड बाय द आवर एंटीना kept at the receiver section that is at the destination so today we can discuss all those things and uh, in this module especially we will discuss about uh, the baseband signal receiver actually we are transmitting the uh, baseband signal okay so all these uh, digital modulation techniques we can speak like uh, these are the uh, baseband signal because uh, here directly the signal will be Uh, transmit uh, modulated and that will be sent because we are not changing the frequency of our uh, carrier like carrier component because if you see uh, sinusoidal carrier for ask uh, we are not changing the frequency of that and similarly we are not changing the frequency of digital component okay so uh, now the receiver section uh, let us speak uh, let us focus on receiver section see in this chapter we will discuss about Uh, the error performance of the digital modulation and uh, demodulation schemes and uh, here we'll discuss already we have seen this uh, contents in the last class the baseband signal receiver and uh, we will calculate the probability of error so how will be the probability of error if you make use of general baseband signal receiver and how will be the probability of error if we uh, use optimum filter okay and how it affects our signal if we use a matched filter instead of general baseband signal receiver so two two kinds of filters we will study here one is optimum and other is a matched filter response and then we'll calculate the error probability for ask uh, phase shift keying amplitude shift keying frequency shift keying and quadrature phase shift keying now Uh, coming to the baseband signal receiver and in the today's session let us calculate the signal to noise ratio for the output uh, for the output signal if we use baseband signal receiver okay and uh, if time permits we can continue with the probability of error okay and uh, let us go through the outcomes here Uh, this is this is the outcome uh, you can be able to evaluate the expressions for output snr or probability of error for baseband signal receiver so let us uh, discuss about in detail about the baseband signal receiver actually here you can observe on circuit here you can observe a circuit this uh, wait for one second you can observe integrate and dump filter receiver here see our baseband signal receiver is also called as integrate and dump filter receiver section because what because our receiver section integrates because uh, here every time we are using low pass filter this will integrate and dump the uh, data towards the destination point okay so let us see the circuit analysis of receiver section so actually here x of t uh, we mentioned here x of t this x of t is the it is in the form of pulse signal okay because we are uh, taking the input as a digital the input as a digital signal for all this digital uh, for all this uh, transmission techniques we are considering the input in the form of digital signal okay so um, this is our let us suppose we are considering uh, a particular bit duration okay so here uh, for example if we are transmitting only one particular bit during this uh, duration okay so for from 0 to t so within a particular time interval you are transmitting a signal of magnitude a and uh, let us see the analysis of this particular uh, response if what happens if we transmit the signal towards the channel if it is fed to the channel in the channel we know that noise will be some noise will be accumulated so based on the noise accumulation based on the type of the noise accumulation our receiving signal data will change okay for example here uh, noise n of t uh, that can be the here we will consider two kinds of assumptions while evaluating the probability of error and one is white if the if the corresponding noise if you assume it as white in nature 
already i told you in uh, another communication that the white noise is a kind of uh, noise whose power spectral density is uniform throughout the spectral distribution okay its power spectral density is uniform so in general we took there as eta by 2 in some other, in uh, our digital communication instead of eta they considered it as n not okay uh, so follow the notation n not by 2 yeah, follow the notation n not by 2 instead of eta by 2 for the evaluation of whole uh, probability of error so here uh, and in general gaussian noise is considered for evaluation of uh, the our uh, digital signal okay evaluation of digital signal and the extraction of digital signal at the receiver section why gaussian noise is uh, only considered because we have flicker noise we have poison noise so many kinds of noise are available thermal noise short noise varieties of noise and why we are considering only uh, like uh, white noise and gaussian noise so white is a one whose uh, sorry for the disturbance see here uh, uh, the data is uh, applied to the integrated section which data the sum of x of t and n of t the sum of x of t and n of t is applied to the low pass filter we know in the receiver section we will have a low pass filter okay that low pass filter acts as an integrator see actually here we are using ic741 i think you you will study it in the linear ics we don't go in detail but uh, here uh, linear ic okay this is a, a linear ic which is 741 and here you can you have you know that uh, it possess two terminals one is a non inverting terminal and other is the inverting terminal so here non inverting terminal that is positive terminal is set to ground it's it's grounded and for stability purpose an inverting the input is applied to the inverting terminal you know that a negative feedback gives you high stability because i think you studied in edc that negative feedback provides you like high stability for the our uh, output signal so that's why here the negative terminal for the negative terminal input is applied so our uh, the sum of uh, x of t and n of t is collected by the receiving antenna and the receiver section at the receiver we are using Uh, IC seven four one, which acts as an integrator. So when it will act as an integrator, if the input is applied across the resistance, and if you collect the output across the capacitor, you can say that the corresponding circuit acts as an integrator. Here, input is applied to the inverting terminal. Input is applied to the inverting terminal. Okay, via the resistance R, via the resistance R, and uh, the output is applied to is fed back to the input section via the capacitor see here output is collected at the capacitance terminal output is connected to the capacitor and some portion of the output is fed back to the negative terminal via the capacitance via the capacitance so that's why we can say that the corresponding ic acts as an integrator the because input is applied at the resistance and output you are collecting at across the capacitance terminal you can say the corresponding ic741 acts as an integrator and why you have applied only input to the negative terminal so you have applied input to the negative terminal in order to provide the stability in order to provide the stability and a positive terminal is connected to ground and now uh, this whole circuit the external uh, connection is rc combination it acts as an integrator now here other than this uh, 7741 external connection we have two switches so one is s1 switch and other is s2 here s1 switch is generally called as dump switch dump switch and s2 is called as sample switch see here uh, for example if you consider this as one sample interval that is from 0 to t you are transmitting one particular bit so i can say that this is for uh, this can you can use for uh, 
uh, ASK, FSK or PSK transmission techniques. Binary transmission technique and here S2 is called as sample switch. Because at the end of the interval, so here what is the end of the interval capital T and what is the starting of the interval at zero? OK, so here timing synchronization is provided by the two switches. Already you know that uh, the importance of bit synchronizer. You know the importance of bit synchronizer. Here a bit synchronizer is also used. I think you have seen the uh, corresponding bit synchronization, bit synchronizer importance in PSK. OK, what it will do it uh, the bit synchronizer provides the timing synchronization uh, by operating the two switches. So what is the importance of two switches here? Yes, one switch is called as dump switch and this switch will be closed. When we'll close the switch S1 at the starting of the interval zero. And at the closing of the at the when the S2 will be closed. So we'll close S2 switch at the end of the interval capital T. At the end of interval capital T, we'll close the switch. And at the start of the interval, we'll close S1 switch. And during uh, 0 and T, during the time interval between 0 and T, both S1 and S2 will be open. OK, you have seen the same operation in the PSK receiver section. S1 will clo we'll close S1 switch at the starting of bit interval and will close why it is closed at starting of interval because before the start of the interval, we should set the uh, earlier data earlier integrated data to zero. That's why this S1 will be closed. Once it is closed, the earlier data will be uh, set to. Ground. OK, and uh, what about uh, uh, during the integration that is from zero to T time interval? S1, S2 both will be open. Once both is both the switches are open, the uh, here in the low pass filter performs integration. Here this per filter performs integration. Then what next? Uh, at time interval T, at exactly at time interval T, the sample switch S2 is closed. The sample switch S2 is closed. Once it is closed, the output is uh, whatever the integrated data will be fed to the to the output section to the decision device. Actually, we'll use decision device at the output here and the corresponding integrated data will be fed to the decision device. So this is a general receiver section. Used for uh, evaluation of baseband signal. OK, so here X of T plus N of T that is the where N of T is the noise added in the channel and both are applied to the low pass filter used in the receiving section. This low pass filter performs integration during the time interval 0 to T. At a time exactly 0 like uh, before start of the interval, S1 will be closed to set the earlier integrated data to 0. And between 0 to T, uh, integration will be performed. At the time, S1, S2 both will be open. OK. Next at exactly time is equal to T, S1 will, clo will close S1. So then what happens? The integrated data, the present bit integrated data will be fed to the decision device. This is the general circuit for uh, baseband signal or receiver. OK, it is also called as integrate and dump filter receiver because here you are using low pass filter and two switches. OK, so when both switches are open, integration will perform and uh, uh, when the switch S1 will be closed, when both the switches are closed, then what will happen? When S2 is closed, the data will be dumped to the output section. When S1 is closed, the earlier integrated data will be set to ground. Okay. This is the uh, performance of baseband signal receiver. Let us calculate the SNR. Let us calculate the SNR and uh, followed by probability of error. Please uh, follow the notations input signal to the. Input to the whole uh, uh, modulator is X of T and N of T is our noise and R of T is the received data. R of T is the received data uh, that is from the low pass filter. OK. Now, so what are the what is the input signal? Let us assume the input signal be X of T. 
and n of t be the noise added in the channel. In the receiver section, the low pass filter acts as an integrator. I told you the points and here IC741 acts as a high gain operational amplifier. By adding resistor at the input and capacitor in the negative feedback connecting the output, here this IC741 acts as an low pass filter and performs integration. Okay, now the output from the low pass filter, let us assume that be R of T. Now, how can you relate R of T with the input? What is the input to the receiver section? X of T plus N of T. Now, the integration of X of T plus N of T will be the low pass filter output. That is R of T. So, please carefully observe the derivation. Okay, so what is R of T? R of T is the output of the low pass filter, which is 1 by RC, where RC is the time constant, where RC is the time constant provided by the filter. OK, so 1 by RC integral 0 to TB because we are evaluating for capital T because we consider the bit duration as capital T. Here uh, uh, T is equal to TB. OK, so X of T plus N of T into DT. So please split the equation. Then R of T will be 1 by RC integral 0 to TB x of t into dt plus 1 by rc integral 0 to tb n of t dt. What we did? Just we split the ex above expression because r of t is the output of low pass filter which is the integration of the input. Input is x of t plus n of t and 1 by rc is the time constant provided by the filter. Okay, So 1 by rc integral 0 to tb x of t dt plus similarly 1 by rc integral 0 to tb n of t dt. OK, now uh, coming to the please let us uh, assume. Let us assume x naught of t. See for calculation of output SNR, you should know what is the output signal component and what is the output noise component. Because noise is um, noise n of t is added in the channel. So please assume the out, output signal as x of t and output noise component as n of t. OK, output signal is x of t, x naught of t and output noise component is n naught of t and x of t and n naught n of t are the inputs. x naught of t and n naught of t are the outputs. Here we are going to in the today's class, we are going to calculate the output SNR. OK, so what is R of t then? R of t already we split that equation into two terms. One is the integration of input input signal x of t and second is the integration of uh, input noise component or the noise component added in the channel. OK, so let us take the first term as x naught of t. Let us assume the first term which is the integration of x of t as the output signal because output signal we can issue, we can take it as the in integration of input signal. Assuming the noise as absent for, for evaluation of output signal. And similarly, uh, let us assume 1 by RC integral 0 to TB n, o, n of T DT. Take the second term as N naught of T. For evaluation of noise, we did not consider the signal. This is like an assumption. See, n naught of t will be 1 by rc integral 0 to tb n naught n of t. So overall uh, the signal will obtain as the integration of input which is r of t. So total output is r of t and we consider r of t as x naught of t plus n naught of t where x naught of t is the integration of input signal and n naught of t is the integration of input noise component. Now, how can you calculate the output SNR? You know that output SNR is defined as the ratio of signal power to that of noise power. Output SNR is defined as the ratio of output signal power to output noise power. Output signal power you can obtain by using output signal. Output noise power you can observe using, you can calculate using output noise component. Okay. Let us calculate the output SNR. Now, please uh, observe the corresponding sl uh, slide shown here. 
now let us calculate see in order to calculate the output snr output snr is defined as the ratio of uh, output signal power to that of output noise power now how can you define output signal power you know the definition for output signal power because you calculated uh, like signal power noise power everything in the analog communication you know the definition for that it is defined as mean square value of the output signal x not of t so what is the signal power output signal power mean square value of the output signal now we know that uh, a is the magnitude of input pulse signal x of t a is the magnitude of but please mute yourself here you can observe that uh, what is output signal power it is defined as mean square value of the output signal x not of t so what is the magnitude of input signal capital a we assumed it as capital a now what is x not of t x not of t is the integration of input signal and here for some time we'll don't consider the effect of noise okay so for evaluation of output signal power let us not consider the Uh, noise component and evaluate now what is x not of t 1 by rc integral 0 to tb x of t dt now what is signal power mean square value of output signal that is x not square of t now uh, we know that uh, that is our our assumption time let uh, the total time interval be the bit interval tb so we are performing the integration for the time interval 0 to t or 0 to tb here let us consider it as 0 to t and we are solving because we are evaluating the general expression and the time constant rc for some time you assume it as tau okay so time constant rc is tau uh, so it is amount of time interval uh, to reach 0.63 percentage of the maximum value okay so that is our assumption so let us take it as tau now how can you define output signal x not of t it is defined as 1 by rc integral 0 to tb x of t dt okay so what is x of t x of t has a magnitude of capital a for the limits 0 to t for the limits 0 to t so 1 by rc integral 0 to t a dt so the integration of uh, dt will be t so if you apply the limits you will get t minus 0 so it will be t only so that's why the value will be at by tau where tau is the time constant rc now finally you got output signal as at by tau how can you get the signal power so output signal power is obtained as mean square value of the output signal so a square t square by tau square please take this equation as 1 what is the next parameter you should calculate output noise power so after calculation of output noise power you can take the ratio of output signal power to output noise power to calculate the output snr okay now so let us calculate the output noise power how can you define output noise power it is defined as mean square value of the output noise component so in order to get the mean square value that is nothing but the total uh, component uh, we can obtain also obtain by using the integration of its output power spectral density so you can define the output noise power as the integration of output noise power output uh, noise power spectral density okay so what is the noise component we assumed it as n of t okay and what is the output noise n not of t n not of t is the output noise component so by taking the integration of the power spectral density of n not of t that is let us let, let us assume the power spectral density of n not of t b is the not of f okay the fourier transform of n not of t b is the not of f so by integrating the uh, s n not of f you can obtain the 
uh, mean square value of the output signal or else that is nothing but the noise power. Okay, it is defined as mean square value of the output noise component that is n0 square of t. You can obtain this n0 square of t that is the noise power by taking the integration of its output power spectral density. Okay, please observe here. What is output spe power spectral density? It is defined as the product of square of transfer function h of f, the square of output transfer function h of f and input power spectral density SNI of f. What is SN0 of f? It is defined as the product of square of transfer function and the input power spectral density SNI of f. Here SNI of f is the Fourier transform of n of t, where n of t is the input noise. Here for evaluation of output noise, we are not considering the effect of signal. So let us first evaluate the output noise component. Okay, so for calculation of noise power, first you should take the, you should, it's nothing but the mean square value of output noise signal. You can evaluate this by taking the integration of output power spectral density, output noise power spectral density, that is SN0 of F. But what is the relationship between output PSD and input PSD? Output PSD is square of transfer function of the filter. It's the product of square of transfer function of the filter and SNI of F. What is SNI of F? The power spectral density of the input noise signal. So at last you can conclude the noise power expression as integral minus infinite to plus infinite SN0 of F DF. It is equal to integral minus infinite to plus infinite h square of f into SNI of f df. Okay, please remember the, uh, take it as equation 2. And equation 1 is output signal power. You got it as a square t square by tau square. Now, let us calculate the transfer function of the low pass filter because you don't know uh, the value of h of f. Once you know h of f, you can directly substitute the square of f, h of f to calculate the output noise power. So that's why let us evaluate the transfer function of low pass filter. So what is the general shape of the input signal? We consider it in the form of a pulse. Okay, so if the pulse signal is applied to the in low pass filter, it, in, it integrates and generates almost all a ramp component. Okay. And here we have defined the time constant as RC, which is tau, and it is the amount of time interval to reach to 0.63 percentage of the maximum amplitude A. Okay, and this is in the shape, the output ramp component is in the shape of a one, it's a, if you consider A as one, it will be one minus E power minus J omega T divided by our uh, time constant, that is J omega RC. So this is the general transfer function of the low pass filter. If input is pulse and output is a ramp component. Output will be the ramp component. So you can observe this uh, in, I think in PDC you can, you will solve the expression. And you can obtain the transfer function as 1 minus e power minus j omega t divided by j omega rc. Okay, now please rewrite the uh, e power minus j omega t. You know that e power j omega t minus j omega t you can divide define it as cos omega ct here we are considering as omega only so cos omega t minus j omega t here the time interval is capital t so that's why we replaced it as capital t here now split into real and imaginary terms here we in the denominator you have j okay so that's why our uh, sin omega t will be the real component here because uh, j sin omega t divided by j omega rc. So it will be our real component plus here uh, j is written as j square. So we multiplied and divided with respect to j. Okay. And finally we got it as j into uh, 1 minus cos omega t divided by j square omega rc. Okay. Divided by j square omega RC. Now, so it is equals to, please split. And here J, J gets cancelled. Okay. Here, 
j and j gets cancelled and here j square will be minus 1 so minus minus j into 1 minus cos omega t divided by omega tau divided by omega tau so once again we have rewritten rewritten that uh, we uh, we took uh, uh, in the denominator let us take it as omega tau so it will be sin omega t minus j into 1 minus cos omega t okay so this is our transfer function now let us uh, square because we need square h square you need okay h square of f you need so that will be uh, whole square okay so because you have re real and imaginary terms it will be a square plus b square divided by in the denominator you have omega tau so that square gives you the magnitude square of magnitude of h of f okay just we simplified the expression and we got h square of f as sin square omega t plus 1 minus cos omega t whole square divided by omega tau where tau is rc now let us uh, once again uh, simplify the expression we got h square of f so sin square omega t plus 1 minus cos omega t whole square divided by omega tau whole square please split the numerator so 1 a minus b whole square please split like that sin square omega t plus 1 plus a square plus b square b is cos square omega t minus 2ab that is 2 cos omega t okay divided by omega tau whole square here sin square plus cos square will be 1 so 1 plus 1 already you will have another 1 so this will be 2 minus 2 cos omega t divided by omega tau whole square if you take 2 as common in from the numerator so 2 into 1 minus cos omega t divided by 2 pi f tau whole square okay so it will be 2 into uh, this 1 minus cos omega t the general expression is so if you write omega as 2 pi f please write omega as 2 pi f omega as 2 pi f so if you write like that 1 minus cos 2 pi ft that will be 2 sin square 2 pi ft divided by 2 so 2 2 gets cancel here so it will be pi ft sin square pi ft and another 2 here so 4 it will be in the numerator and 2 square is in the denominator so 4 4 gets cancel so finally you got the transfer function h square of f transfer function of the low pass filter square of transfer function of low pass filter as sin square pi ft divided by pi f tau here where tau is equals to where tau is equals to time constant rc and t is the total time interval of the corresponding bit corresponding bit at the transmitter section okay so now our transfer function square as we got it as sin square pi ft by pi f tau whole square now please substitute our transfer function take it as equation 3 and substitute the square of transfer function in the noise power calculation so let us calculate the noise power so now please substitute the transfer function from equation 3 so if from equation 3 you got the transfer function as sin square pi ft divided by pi f tau whole square substitute the transfer function from equation 3 in equation 2 what is equation 2 noise power expression to calculate the output noise power spectral density sn not of f okay this sn not of f is nothing but the h square of f into sni of f okay now here we are assuming the noise as white in nature so if you consider white noise our power spectral density sni of f will be n0 by 2 because for a white noise the power spectral density is constant and the, that is assumed to be n0 by 2 okay so n0 by 2 uh, so noise power will be what is the general expression noise power n0 square of t which is integral minus infinite to plus infinite h square of f into sni of f dn you got already uh, h square of f please substitute h square of f and sni of f let us calculate so sni of f is the 
we assume it as white noise. OK, if you assume it as white noise, you can take SNI of F as N0 by 2. OK, so this N0 by 2 is independent of integration. So take that N0 by 2 outside the integration and do the integration for uh, h square of f. Where h square of f will be sin square pi of t divided by pi of tau whole square df. And the limits are from minus infinite to plus infinite. OK, now let us simplify that. So here n naught square of t, n naught square of t is n naught by 2 integral minus infinite to plus infinite sin square pi of t divided by pi of tau whole square df. Actually, our intention is to get in the form of sin x by x whole square. But in the numerator you have t and denominator you have tau. So you need to replay, rearrange that uh, to get in the form of sin square x, sin x by x whole square. OK, so for that purpose, let us simplify the uh, corresponding uh, expression. So by assuming pi of t as some x, please assume pi of t as some x. So if you assume pi of t as x, here you need to replace f. OK, so uh, pi of t, if you take it as f x, then f will be f will be x by pi t. f will be x by pi t. Therefore, df will be dx by pi t. Here pi t is independent factor. OK, df will be dx by pi t. OK, so n naught square of t, please substitute these values in the general expression. And here f, when f is infinite, infinite x will also be infinite. Uh, so limits will be as usual to the earlier case. That is minus infinite to plus infinite. So n naught by 2 minus infinite to plus infinite sine square x because we assumed pi of t as x. So sine square x divided by pi f tau. What is f? We need to replace f because we are rearranging the f value in terms of x. So please replace f here in the denominator. So it is x by pi t. So we replaced it as x by pi t into tau whole square into uh, what is df? df is dx by pi t. So dx by pi t. OK, so this 1 by pi t you can take outside the integral because this integration is with respect to x. So take this 1 by pi t outside the integral. Now here in the denominator pi x by pi t into tau you have. See here pi pi gets cancelled. You can cancel pi and pi. And next here you will get uh, x square leave it like that and tau square by t square tau square by t square is there in the denominator to get in the numerator you can write it as t square by tau square so that's why outside the integral you will get 1 by pi t this one is 1 by pi t and n0 by 2 and another is the denominator section that is uh, t square by tau square the denominator value we are representing in numerator. So that's why you will get t square by tau square into. Actually, the limits are from minus infinite to plus infinite, but we are going to rearrange the expression in the form of 0 to infinite sin x by x whole square dx because this value is pi by 2. To rearrange the expression in form of 0 to infinite sin x by x whole square dx, uh, we are going to simplify our expression. So we are writing the uh, splitting the expression, splitting the integration instead of minus infinite to plus infinite. If you want to represent only half, that is only the positive frequencies from zero to infinite, you can take uh, the multiplication with two. So two, you can write integral minus infinite to plus infinite as two integral zero to infinite sin x by x whole square dx. Now this uh, integral 0 to infinite sin x by x whole square dx is nothing but uh, like using some trigonometric uh, derivations. Uh, we can get it as pi by 2. That is the constant value. So please replace integral 0 to infinite sin x by x whole square dx as pi by 2. 
OK, please uh, replace. You can see it in the next slide. So simplify the following equation. What is that equation? N0 square of t is 1 by pi t N0 by 2 into t square by tau square into 2 integral 0 to infinite sin x by x whole square dx. But integral 0 to infinite sin x by x whole square dx is pi by 2. It is pi by 2. Please replace pi by 2. If you replace it with pi by 2, 2, 2 gets cancelled here. Pi, pi gets cancelled. And finally, you can get n naught square of t as here t, t. One, here you have 1 t in the denominator. So, it will get cancelled. So, you will get n naught square of t. That is not, nothing but the noise power, which is the integration of uh, the output noise power spectral density. Okay, We got it as n naught into t divided by 2 tau square n naught into t divided by 2 tau square. So we take this as equation 4. Now finally you got the output noise power expression as for a baseband signal receiver as n naught t divided by 2 tau square. And how you got the output signal power a square t square by tau square. Okay. So that is equation 1 and we took this as equation 4. Now using equation 4 and 5 equation 4 and 1 sorry. So how can you define the uh, expression for output SNR? Output SNR is defined as the ratio of output signal power to output noise power. Output signal power is x naught square of t. Output noise power is n naught square of t. Please substitute sig output signal power. This please write here as output signal. So while uploading I will change it. Substitute the output signal power x naught square of t from equation 1 as a square t square by tau square and noise power n naught square of t from equation 4 as n naught t by 2 tau square. So if you rearrange you can get it as a square t square by tau square divided by n naught t by 2 tau square. Here tau square tau square gets cancelled and 1 t gets cancelled here. Okay, so finally you got it as 2 a square t divided by n naught. 2 a square t divided by n naught. What is a actually? a is the amplitude of the input signal. Input signal. And t is the time interval of the corresponding pulse signal. Okay, so 2 a square into t. You can, if you assume uh, the resistance value as r as 1 ohm, Energy can be defined as the ratio, the product of power in time. Okay, that is uh, voltage square into R into time. Time interval is capital T. Voltage square is A square into R actually, but R we consider as one ohm. If you consider like that, you can take A square T as the bit energy, as the bit energy. So you can also write it as A square into T B. Because t, we assume t is equal to Tb. Okay, so a square into t, you can write it as bit energy. So what is bit energy? 2 Eb. So bit energy is Eb. So that's why the please always remember this expression which I have mentioned in the rectangular boxes. So what is the output XN, SNR for a general uh, baseband signal receiver? 2 Eb by n naught, where Eb is bit energy which is a square r into t where uh, a square a is the magnitude of input signal and r is considered as 1 ohm and t is the bit duration tb okay so with this we can conclude the calculation of output snr for baseband signal receiver in the next class we can calculate the powers like probability of error we can calculate the probability of error for baseband signal receiver. Okay. And if possible, we can continue with the probability of expressions for ASK, FSK. We can continue. Or else, uh, and further class, we can continue with the probability of error of ASK. Okay. So, this is all about the SNR calculation for baseband signal receiver.